So this is Mr. Hambright. He was arrested and put in the Oakland County Jail in June or July of 2022. He was let out in December 2023, but less than a month later, he was arrested again. His original charges were larceny from a motor vehicle, larceny in a building, larceny in a building, and armed robbery. Once he was let out, he was good for a little bit and then was arrested again on domestic violence, second offense, assault, and obstructing resisting a police officer. Now, today, he is up for a probable cause conference on the larceny and robbery charges in front of Judge Bowie, who we met in the Brianna Kingsley case. The problem is, is that Mr. Hambright doesn't want to. So, he's not gonna. Eh. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. I just got your text message. Right, right. That's okay. Yeah. You might want to sit over at Ms. Willis' side on the prosecutor's head with the post. You're going to switch uh, Mr. Tapali. Yeah, we can switch. It's not an issue at all. It's a good idea. This is the night all day. Mr. Hambright, your attorney's here. He wants to talk to you, man. It'd be great to have an opportunity to talk to your attorney. Hambright. No. Hambright. See how you're reacting to that? All right. So let's talk to your attorney. She's here and wants to talk to you. We had to check out again, cleared by medical staff before we brought him here. We've been cleared twice. This is how he's going to want to stop that. You don't want to go there. Are you ready to proceed? Well, can I, just, I, I mean, I, but I do have to feed up for the record. No, I understand the record, but it's going today, but I don't have to make the record. Because I. I'm not a medical professional. I have no idea what's going on with Mr. And by times, but he isn't is not responsive. So he's clearly not going to be able to assist me with his preliminary examination. I reviewed the discovery. I'm ready to hold the preliminary examination, but I feel uh, somewhat. Well, let me call it on the record first. Okay. Before we uh, because this is none of this is on the record. No. This is 2303 30 People State of Michigan versus Cameron, Jeremy and Bright Times. Here's the record. Enter to follow behalf of the people, Your Honor. Please allow the report, Sharon Park, what's that chair will be happy, Mr. Ham by time, who is present physically in the courtroom, but does not appear to be present mentally in the courtroom. He's in the jury box, laid back. He's not responsive. I've called his name a couple of times. He's not, not responding. But he has a right to participate in this preliminary examination. And in his current state, he clearly is not going to be able to assist me in the preliminary examination. I'm not even able to speak with him because he's not responding. So I can't ask him questions. I mean, I reviewed the discovery. I prepared the whole of the preliminary examination, but I think as his advocate, I have a responsibility to make sure that he can participate in this preliminary examination. He has a constitutional right to that. And right now, it doesn't appear that he's going to be able to do that. Or I'm not sure what's going on with Mr. Hambright Times right now. Understood. Uh, the right of the fam is statutory. It's not constitutional. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, People write a procedure. All right, we're ready to proceed as well. I, I have one more request. And I have something that I've been sitting on since 11 o'clock wait. So I was going to kind of leave it on in the background. The, the event that they actually called me because I had to step out this and do it right for like five minutes. That's fine. Okay. Is that, I've been trying to get this done for a while. Wow. Uh, as we indicated, Mr. Hammer, my time is in the courtroom. Uh, we're ready, of course, ready to proceed. People are ready to proceed, Your Honor. People would like to call uh, our first witness, Stephen Gross, to a stand. 
Sure, can you stand up and go to that chair over here? Just for the record, Jack, I do want to correct the witnesses. Yeah, I only have my YC uh, present, uh, which is Sergeant Hans, and I do have all my witnesses on side trial. All right, Leo. I, I have a routinely object even to the YC if the YC is going to testify today or in some future proceedings, they're going to be treated no differently than any other witness unless they happen to be material for the proceeding right now. It is well established that the OICs for the purpose of preliminary exams can be in the court of the There's no one, so any rulings or case law that precludes an OIC from being assisting an IPA during, of course, Mr. Hunt is crucial to this case. He's the officer in charge, has been assisting me during this dire case, so I definitely have a need to have Mr. Hunt present to assist me during the exam. Understood. And then, Ms. Woodside, you did say if he's critical to the case, which Mr. Polly said he is, he may remain, so he will remain. And I just want to note that the extraction team, Oak County Sheriff's Office in the court, none of them have anything to do with the facts of this case. Raise your hand. You swear or affirm, subject to the pain defense, purge your testimony to the court be the truth, so the truth be not the truth. I do. Are you making seated? Whenever you're ready, Mr. Biden. Thank you, and I appreciate the court's patience. Sir, can you please state your full name? Stephen Crosey. And spell it as well. S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-R-O-C-E. -E. Sir, uh, where are you employed? 40 West Howard, Pontiac. And uh, how are you employed? I have a sign company there. And how long have you been there for? Uh, since 2016. Oh. Uh, oh. 2016. And how long? Uh, yeah, really. Help. 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 Let me tell you, uh, let me draw your attention to July 5th, 2022. Uh, were you at your work place that day? Yes. Oh, 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 what's going on? Help me. I need proper medical treatment. Please help. 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 I feel like I'm about to pass out. I went. Sir, let me draw your attention on July 5th, 2022. Uh, where were you that day? In my office at my shop. And is that a city of Pontiac? Yep. Is that in Oakland County? Yep. And just answer yes. Yes. For the purpose of the record. Uh, and, and where is your executive office located again? What's the address of your office? 40 West Tower. And do you, what, that office is only you or all other employees as well? Other employees. Okay. And that day and time of question, what time did you get into the office? Seven o'clock. In the morning? Yep. At yep. some point, did you, do you typically, is that your company typically open to people to walk in? Yes. Well, yeah. no, not to walk in, no. Okay. So it's, what, it's not open to the public. It's not open. It's a public. manufacturing facility. Gotcha. So, but, so it's, it's typically open the door or closed? The door is typically locked and that day was not locked. Okay. Yeah, and who do you, do you know who was the last person who walked in that day? I believe it was me. It was you. And at some point, did you hear someone open the front door office? Yes. And once you heard that, uh, help, did, 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 what did you do? I got up to look because sometimes there's two entrances. We have our own entrance. Hold on one second. One second. If you outburst, let me talk to you. If you outburst again, you will be taken uh, out of this courtroom and your exam will uh, still go on because you're interrupting uh, the flow of this court. Uh, uh, uh. Mr. Ambright, right time. Relax. This exam is going to go on. So the charade in the circus you put hey. on is not going to stop this exam. Uh, so you might as well just sit there and relax. I need to speak with my attorney. I need medical attention. Oh, so now you're good. I need medical that's how attention. All, that's how I know all this is game. I need medical now you're, you're good. I need medical attention. No, remain silent. I need medical Remain silent, Mr. Ann Right Time. Help. I'm asking for help. I'm asking for what is, help. What is, what is the exact I'm problem? I'm asking for help. What is I'm the exact problem? What's the exact problem? Exact I can't problem. breathe. I cannot breathe. I'm having chest pain. Do you need I to stand up? 
I cannot breathe. So you need to stand up. Do you need please. to stand up? Please. Okay. Please. Let him let you stand up. I feel like I'm about to pass out. Please. Stand up. Please. Stand up. They can say go to the ground. Stand up. Now, are you okay? Just stand up. All right, you make a team. Thank you. At some point, you said you heard the door open. Yeah, so I went to check to see who it was because sometimes people come to our suite thinking it's the main entrance or it's a FedEx or Amazon driver. So I got up to see and I saw him walking out. Him being who? Mr. Cameron. And can you describe him? Uh, I mean, to me, he was a young black male. Objection. He either knows or he doesn't know. That's a direct yeah. question. Can you describe him? You can either describe him or he can't. He actually, for the record, he pointed at him and actually did his thumb to like on the side where Mr. Hambright was seat, right. seating. But the question was, can you describe him? And I'm assuming that meant at the time that you saw him on some other date, not today. All right, so just refreshing. Can you describe what you saw him? Yeah. Can, can you describe what you saw him? A young, a young black male with long hair. He was wearing a wife beater and jean shorts. And, and a backpack. Point, and a backpack? Yes. And at, some, at this point, how far were you from him? Probably four feet. Four feet. And do you see that individual in the courtroom here? Yes. Can you please describe a clothing item that he's wearing or where is he seated? No, please do some medical He's sitting over there with the uh, striped suit on. I'm asking for help. Let the record reflect that this witness and I oh, find please, it. Please, All right, the record will reflect. Thank you. Did you uh, did you actually make contact with Mr. Uh, Hampright Rice at that time? Yes. And what, if anything, did you tell Mr. Hampright? Tyson? I asked him what he was doing. And I saw him walking out with some wire that we had by the door. And I said, hey, man, can you just put the wire back? And he said, get away from me. And I said, hey, just put the wire back and go. And then he reached in his pocket and pulled out a knife. Can you describe this knife? I, I think it was a Swiss Army knife. OK. Excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt you. They're calling this case. Can I just step out and hop for about two minutes just to get this done? Yeah, you let me know you're in the middle of a capital exam. And I'll um, call you quickly. Well, yes, they're calling me. He's calling okay, me. Let's go. Thank you. I cannot breathe, Your Honor. Well, I would like to speak to my attorney if I can speak to my attorney. Good morning. I'm not feel well. I was dragged in here. And I was not clear. I didn't even give her when I was away. And I was brought in here in a conscious state, bro. Ah, shit. Oh. Mr. Hambright. I'm oh, sorry. Gotta watch your language, sir. Go sit in the seat. I said, I wasn't brought in here in a conscious state. I don't know why these things are on my ankles like this. This is like, like this. All right, Mr. Hambright, please remain silent. We're going to go back on the record with 230330 FY, people of the state of Michigan versus Cameron, Jeremy Hambright Times, appearance of the record. Editor to follow me off the people, Your Honor. Ms. Woodside, appearance for the record. Again, may I please this honorable court, Sharon Clark, which I appear on behalf of Mr. Hambright Times, who's present now and seated to my left. He needs to state his name for the record. Cameron Hambright Times. All right, you're in the middle of direct examination of Mr. Just, yeah, I'll have him repeat his name. Sir, I know we, you did once, but because we cut off, can you please repeat your name? And I would like to remind you, you're still under oath. Nothing has changed. Stephen Croce. Thank you. And sir, we, we cut off at where you said that you were four feet away from uh, Mr. Hambright Times, correct? Yes. And at that point, you said that uh, Mr. Hambright Times did pull a knife. Yes. And what, what was he taking from your building at that time? Spools of wire. And is that your wire uh, belong to you or your company? Yes. Did you give permission to Hamburg, uh, Hamburg Times to get that property? No. And once, did you initially tell him to drop the property? Yes. And did he do so? No. What did he do? He just said, get away from me, man. And at that time, what did you tell him? I said, just put the wire down and leave. And once he, did he produce a knife at some point? Yes, after I said it the second time. And what did, what did, you, do, what did you tell him next? Nothing. I just went back in 
my office. Just you, so okay. So you, why did you walk back to your office? Because they had a knife. And you were you in fear for your life? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions for this business. Uh, Mr. Crow, you, you also wrote a statement, right? Yes. And, 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 is this and, uh, Cross? Yes, yeah, this is Cross's yes. evidence. Can you go to the... Mm -hmm. you, you gave a statement on uh, 7-5-2022, seven, seven, about 7-30. Yes. And when you gave your statement, you weren't in any rush, were you? No. And nobody told you what to say in your statement? No. Right? And nobody told you what not to say in your statement? Is that right? Yeah. And in your statement, you describe exactly what took place. Is that right? Yes. So let me ask you. You saw, you said you first hear the door open. Is that right? Yes. And then you said you see my client, correct? I got up from my desk to see who came in the door. Okay. And when you first, and when you saw my client, he already had the wire that had been taken off of a cart, correct? Yes. How many bundles? I think it was two. So he had one in each hand, would that be right? I think he had two in both hands, they were small. Two small bundles. Can I approach the witness, Your Honor? Just join for the color follow up that came and discovered. So I'm gonna ask you to take a look at these and you tell me if you recognize what they are. Yes, yeah, spools of wire. Okay. So those, how many spools of wire do you see in photo one? Four. Photo two? Four. Are those the same spools of wire that you say my client had in his hand? I think, if I recall, it's only the two with the yellow and red on top. May I approach okay. that? What is he referring to? So he's referring to this, I'm gonna call this photo A and this photo B, and you're saying in photo B that has the, backpack on the trunk and it has looks like a two bottles of cleanser and a bottle of water sticking out of a backpack. So, so for record purpose, are these being admitted? Yeah, I stipulate there's no objection. But which yeah. which one are you referring that you recall the color wise that you recall? These two I believe are the ones that we had on the cart. And what color are those? Purple and gray. Okay. okay. Let's so, correct can we stipulate to the fact that she recognized only the purple and, and gray? Yes, because I have more questions. Okay. So, so okay. only these two, right? So I believe is so. that right? Here the marks. And B and then this one A. I don't need to refer to it. So, sir, the other two wires, spools of wires, where were they located? Do you know? Objection. Go for speculation. I asked him if he knows. That's not speculation. Well, he clearly testified he only saw two, the purple and the green. So, for him, for brother, sister counsel to ask him, where were the two other wires? How would he know? Wow. Well, I kind of agree with like how we know he don't know. So if that, he knows. Well, I get that's the proper question. If he knows. Yeah, if he knows. Let me rephrase the question. When you first saw my client, you saw two spools. Is that right? Yes, if I recall and correctly. I, okay. You're not even sure if that's correct, are you? It was a long time ago now. Okay, so the answer to my question is no. You're not even sure today, are you? And, and just may I, if you don't recall, sir, I don't want you to guess or not. If you're not sure, just... I, I don't want you to guess. Any I do not recall exactly how many. Hit. Okay. okay. So when you just told us it was two, that might not be accurate. Is that right? Correct. Okay. You were in your office when you heard this door open. Is that right? Yes. And you came out of your office, correct? Yes. Where's this cart in relationship to your office? It was inside our front door. Okay. So two doors away from my office. Okay. And is it the outside doors and then the vestibule or on the inside. other side of the vestibule? On the inside door to our suite. We have a foyer. It was on not the door to the foyer, the door inside our suite. What else is on that cart besides? It was just wire? a cart of wire. And was it, would you agree with me? It was clearly more than two spools of wire on, Correct. That, yes. on that cart. Is that right? Yes. Do you have an idea about how many spools could have been on that cart? I do not recall. Okay. And then when you saw him, he said, you agreed that he already had two spools in his hand, right? Yes. And did you see him get any of the other spools that you see in exhibits A and B? No, I do not. So you never saw him with more than two in his hand? Correct. Are you positive? No, you're I can not. Recall. No, you're not, right? No, not positive. Okay. And then and you, you remember right hand, left hand by chance? I do not remember. Okay. And so, and when you first see him, you say he's four feet away with these spools of wire 
in his hand. The first thing you say is what? I said, what are you doing? And I saw that he had the wire. So I said, just put the wire down and leave. Okay. And he and he did do that, correct? Correct. And at that point, he never charges toward you, though, right? No. And you never come any closer than the four feet to him, no, correct? No, we were a few feet away. And he never threatens you verbally that he's going to do anything to you, right? No, he just said, get away from me, man. Okay. He never swings at you, correct? Correct. So then, this to from that exchange to the very next exchange, how much time passed? A few seconds. Seconds. Yeah. And then the next thing you say is what? Put the wire down and just leave. Okay. And said it twice. And he doesn't and he didn't do that, right? And in that exchange, he still uh -huh. never comes toward you. Is that uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I saw you shake your hand. You do answer yes or no, sir. Can I just shake your hand? It's not gonna reflect. Okay, you, right? sorry. So did did he listen? Just let answer. me ask my question, please, uh, sir. So <laughs> but he's not answering. That's right. And, and let me get some control. You're gonna answer your question fully, and you're not gonna interrupt her. And the same over for you. He gonna answer the question, right? And you're not gonna interrupt him. My bad, <laughs> because I have a bad habit of doing that. Okay. I, I'm seeing you, so I, I understand what you're saying. So between that first exchange and the second exchange, we agree it's about two seconds. Yes, it was. Yes. Even might not even been two seconds, right? It was a few seconds. Okay. And in that maybe two seconds, he still never comes any closer to you, correct? Correct. Never charges at you. Correct. Never swings at you. Correct. By not even swearing at you, correct? Correct. Not threatening you in any way, correct? Correct. And then, I, did you ever step toward him at all? Nope. So, no. No? No, I never stepped Okay. Him. And then when that of all is taking place, you said at some point he just pulls this knife out of his pocket, correct? correct. And is the knife open or closed? It was open. And did, was open. What did he do that? With what hand did he do that? I believe it was his right hand. Are you guessing, sir? If I recall correctly, it was his right hand. Okay. And what does he, besides take it out and open it, what does he do? Nothing. He just okay. had it in his hand. Okay. That doesn't take any more wire, correct? Correct. Doesn't come towards you with this open knife at all, correct? Correct. In fact, you tell him, just take it and go. Is that right? Yes, and then, knife in his hand. Okay, and, but, and then he leaves, right? Correct. Okay, so at no time, the, how far was your office from this whole exchange that we're talking about? 10 feet. And then this 10 feet, he never, what, was there anything between your office and him? No. So nothing stopped you from running to your office, right? Correct. Getting in your office, closing the door, right? Correct. Anybody else in the building but you at that time? Yes, I had employees in the back shop, which is far away from the front. Door. Okay, at any word, at any time when you're yelling, screaming, like this man is trying to kill me. No. He doesn't ever even raise his voice at you, does he? No. Okay, and once he, you tell him to just take it and go, he leaves. Is that right? Correct. Doesn't come back, doesn't take anything else, correct? Correct. And we agree, you don't even know where the other wire that's in the picture comes from. Is that right? Correct. No further questions. With you, Honor. So, sir, once you initially see him, you, you didn't give him any permission to be in your property at that time, did you? No. And once you confronted him about the wires, you, you, you testified that you were not sure how many wires, but you saw him having some wires. Yes. And those wires belong to you or your company. Correct. And but you're not sure whether one or two or, or more than that. I do not recall exactly how many. Fair enough. I know it's been two years. I understand that. Uh, when you told him the first time what you were doing, what, what was his resp uh, the defense Objection, response? Objection. You're going to ask and answer. Well, I'm, I'm going to, like, like. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. He just said, get away from me, man. The defendants don't get away from you, man. Yes. And did you ask him again what he was doing? No, I said, I saw the wire. I said, can you just, just put down the wire and leave? And is this the point that he produces the knife? The second time I said it, he produced the knife. And when you when he produced the knife, how were you feeling, sir? I was kind of in shock because. Okay, wire... Now, this is Stacey's scope of cross examination. Plus, it's been asked and answered. He's already asked that in direct examination. Now he just wants to re ask what he's already asked. Absolutely not. That is not true. She asked him, why didn't you run in the back? Why didn't you even scream? Of course, that's exactly what I'm asking. But you already asked, Judge, he's already asked that and 
direct right. examination, how did you feel? He asked that already. No, I did not. Yes, right. you did. But, but you did come back on uh, cross-examination over the door, so I'm over the objection. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. What was the question again? The question was, were you in fear? How did you feel? Yes, it's never happened to me before. So once he pulled the knife, I was shocked. And why did you tell him to take the stuff and leave? Because there was a knife and nobody's ever pulled a knife on me before. And did you did it out of desire or because why? I was scared. Okay, I have a question. Thank you. I got a question. Ever asked When he produced the knife, was he facing you? Yes. And how far away was he facing? There was, we were still a few feet apart. About four feet apart? Yeah, we weren't close. He produced the knife. Where did he produce it out of? His pocket. I, that was his pocket. He reached in his pocket, and then I started to think, oh, no, because he's reaching in his pocket, and then he pulled out the knife. So Is the knife what? bigger than six inches? I don't think from, so. From blade to handle? Like, how big was it? Was it, I, it looked like a Swiss Army knife. Okay. Less than a uh, foot long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. And so when he, when he pulled the knife, did he hold it up or, or did he have it at his side? At his side. Okay. And he's still facing you? Yes. And what was the next statement that was made? I just told him to take the wire and leave. And then what did he do? He just went up front. All right. And then he was still inside your, your uh, sign business? He was what still you, inside what, the uh, With building? the knife? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then you went in to your office? Yeah, and then we started calling the police and the building manager for the cameras and everything. Okay. And I this told place is about, outfitted with cameras? Yes. Were they working at that time? You, I, you'd have to ask the building manager. It's not my, I'm, I have a suite in there. Okay. So yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't. Also, you're cameras. a tenant. You're yeah, I'm a tenant. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's right. a multi tenant right. building. All right. And you said this was during the day. Yes. Day no okay. Any questions based off my question? Uh, no, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Uh, no, no, no. All right, you're all set. We'd like to thank you. Excuse me. Any other witnesses? Yeah, yeah. Uh, people would like to call Gary Coinus to a stand, and my uh, YC is grabbing him right now. Sir, you please approach the witness stand over there. Watch the step. There's one step over there. Before you set in, the judge is going to swear you in. You're going to have you raise your right hand. All right, raise your right hand. Point this. You swear or affirm subject to the fact that the person in testimony gives us credit to the truth. So I'll tell you about the truth. All right, you guys speak up loud. You may be seated right there. Thank you. Sir, can you please state your full name and spell your last name for the record? It's Gregory Coinus, K O I N I S. Sir, how are you employed? Self employed. And you own? What, I own my own do? painting company. And where's your company located? 40 West Howard Street. That's where I have my shop. Is that a, in the city of Pontiac? Yes, it is. Is that in Oakland County? Yes. Let me draw your attention on July 5th, 2022. Where were you that day in the morning? When I got to work, um, I came up to work, came up to the loading dock, which is off the Trajan, backed in, and I had five guys there helping me load for the job. And between five guys were in and out of the building, bringing stuff back from the building, from my shop, loading up what we needed for the day. Um, we loaded up. Yeah, and yeah so I don't, I don't want to go in there, too, so let's, let's just follow my question. Okay. So, so you're there, you're about to start your day, they're there with your guys to load up, is that correct? And it's at some point after you loaded up, did you decide to go and get go back in your truck in your van? Yeah, I did. And once you went back to your van, approximately how long were you there till you after finishing loading up till you went back to your truck to leave? I'd say 20 minutes, 20 minutes. 25. And at some point when you went back to your van, did you see anything out of ordinary? 
Yeah, somebody came in, somebody entered the van in the front, rifled through the middle section, right? In my van, there's a middle section pull up. Like a rest area, like a resting arm exactly. area? That's where I cut my laptop. And was your laptop there? No. And how did you know somebody had messed up with it? Because what did, what did, what did draw your attention? Well, there's papers and stuff all over the seats. It was obviously that somebody rifled through in front of my truck. Where the, the objects and the items in the vehicle away you had left it prior to getting in, prior to coming back, or in the same manner the, place, the, the, the items you had in the car? No. Okay. And once you realize that your laptop is missing, what is the value of that laptop to your knowledge? It's a Surface Pro. At the time, I paid, I want to say, $1,800. Okay. And <clears throat> once you realized that your laptop was missing, what did you do next, sir? I went back in. Back in where? I went back into the building real quick. And I told Lori my office manager that someone ripped up ripped me off nick who works with me i told nick to get in the truck in the van i got in the van and i proceeded out on the Teresia, took a left on the first street and I saw a homeless guy. Okay. And so pretty much once you realize that your laptop is next to somebody and gone through a car, you, deter you decide to go find out that person? Exactly. Okay. And uh, so you get in the truck with your employee and you said you turn, you're still in the city of Plank. How far when you turn right and you saw this homeless guy? How far was it from your workplace? He was right on Howard Street. And did you approach an individual? What's that? Did you approach this individual? Objection yeah. relevance to the pilot to some homeless person. Well, relevant? It is relevant because it shows up like yes, how hold on. Hold on one second. <clears throat> when we say objection, it just stay silent. Okay. It is relevant because that's gonna show how uh, Mr. Coinus came to actually meet the defendant eventually, based on the information was provided by this homeless person. Because at some point there is contact between uh, Mr. Hambright Times and Mr. Cohen, where he confronts him about his laptop. All right. Objection overruled. Thank you. So you, you spoke with this homeless person? Yes, I asked him if he if he saw anybody with a laptop. Objection to if he's going to say what the homeless person said. That's going to be hearsay. All right, so here's the deal. We got to stop calling anticipatory objections. We don't know what's going to happen. We're not I'm, 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 We're not. We don't know everything. Thank you. Not it, so. Continue, thank you. Thank you. So you asked the homeless person whether he saw somebody with a laptop. Is that correct? Exactly. And what did this homeless person tell you? He said, he asked, he's going to stay with the homeless person. Said that's hearsay. Well, again, if he's not, if he's not going to say uh, that he saw Mr. Hamburg Times with a laptop, it's not necessarily offered for Hamburg Times to prove that he took the laptop. Then what would be the relevance if you're not kind of connected to my client? Then we're just talking about some homeless person on the street, maybe seeing somebody with a laptop, and how would it be relevant to this case? It's going to have the effect that had on this, in this witness, what effect that statement's made by this homeless person had, and what did he do next to proceed to, that he made his way to, to meet, to find your client at some point? Objection over was offered to, uh, for, uh, to act to indicate what he did in next is not offered for the truth of the matter, sir. So that's that, actually no rule. That is correct, Your Honor. Go ahead, sir. He said yes. And I asked him where was he? He said down at Shots Bar at Baldwin and Howard. There's a small little bar there. And how far is this from where you saw this homeless person? Uh, yes, a quarter mile. Quarter mile. And based on that information, did you actually go to that location? Yes. And did the homeless person indicate that he saw somebody with a laptop, you said? Correct. And did the homeless person say anything about whether a transaction was going to take place? Yes, Your Honor. Now we're 
now we're talking about now we're eliciting more hearsay from a homeless person and i'm not sure how that's going to say or show what this person did in response to that you're just getting more information about what some homeless person said again it's not for the truth of matter asserted and any of this testimony is not credited to whether or not Mr. Hembright had this laptop. I'll get to the form of the question then because you could ask the proper question would be, what did this person do in response to what he's told by some homeless person? So I agree with Ms. Uh, Woodside that you had uh, as a result of the conversation with Sure. So what did you do? I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. You can ask me. Okay. Uh, so based on the information that the homeless person told you, did you actually do something else? I drove down the shops. And when you drove down there, what if anything Outside. or anybody did you observe? Uh -uh. Um, no, just talk to me and see what, tell me what you observed. The suspect was going through a truck. The truck was parked, had plastic on the window. The door was open. And when you say, when you say the suspect, can you describe the suspect? Right there. Okay. Can you describe what, how he looked that day? His hair was much shorter. And it is the same individual you saw on the way through that truck today, the same individual you've seen in the courtroom today? Yes. Let the record reflect this witness identify the defendant as well, Your Honor? So no. And once you saw Mr. Hamburg times, did you actually approach him? I rolled down my window because I was, I had my van from me to you from the truck. I rolled down my window. I looked at him. He was carrying a backpack. Can you describe that backpack? If you can. It was, I don't want it to was a small backpack. That's all. I don't know the color. Okay. It's been so long. Fair enough. And what, if anything, did you say to Mr. Hamburg Times at this point once you rolled the window? I asked, I yelled at him. I said, I want my laptop. That's all I want. I don't want any trouble. Give me my laptop and I'll go about my day. And what is what was Mr. Hamburg Times response to that? He walked up to me four feet from the door. Four feet from which door? Your your van or from my van <clears throat> from my side. He was holding the knife. And he looked at me, he says, do you have any money? Okay, let's slow down there. Uh, so when you, when you tell him, when you ask him to give your laptop back, he, he, he stops going through the truck? He stopped going through the truck. And then he approaches towards your direction? Correct. At this point, where are you? You're still in the van? Still in the van. And then this, is that the time that he produces the knife or he had the knife the entire time? He had the knife the entire time. And do you recall this knife? Can you describe it? If you can, I don't want you to speculate. If you remember, yes. If you don't, you know. All I remember is the knife. The blade was about four inches long. Okay. And at this point, how were you feeling when he put the, when he approached you with the knife? I was very pumped up, to tell you the truth, because I wanted my laptop. And did he actually give you a laptop back? No. What did you do next? Well, after he asked me for money, I said, I want my laptop. He looked at me, said, fuck off. Excuse the French. No, no, I want you exactly to say what he said. That's exactly what he said. Yep. Okay. He picked up his backpack from the ground and started running back towards the building, which is east. Okay, at this point, did you notify the police? At that time, I called 911. And did you continue to follow Mr. Hambright Times? Yep, sure did. And were you, brought, uh, were you following him in a close distance or were you following him from, from far? I was, he was running between houses. I went over a parking block. I traveled through a person's yard and took another right 
onto that street. He circled around that house, got into an alley, and I got on the Baldwin. I started right. I took a right. I spotted them two houses down and pulled in. You said pulled Stop. in? <clears throat> What's that? You said you pulled in? I pulled in. And what were you doing? I was in the driveway. Hold on. Listen to my question. What were you doing there when you pulled in? So we, we cannot, I cannot let you go in a narrative. I, we have to chop it off because that's the court rules. Sure. For the parts. So you pulled in. At this point, did you still have visual of Mr. Yes, he was up against the fence. Okay. And at some point, did the police made it there? Correct. And going back to your uh, docking station, uh, are you aware that there's cameras there? Oh, yeah. And you know you have knowledge of these cameras? Yeah. Okay. And at that time where your car was parked, would it have been under, uh, would show where your vehicle was, was parked? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to people proposed exhibit one, which is the docking area, loading bay area, the date and time uh, that was July 5th, around 7 30 in the morning. Sir, is that a fair and accurate? That's correct. Place where you well, let me finish my question. Is that a fair and accurate place where you parked that uh, your van that morning? Yes. And how do you know that? Because that's my van. Okay, that's your work van. That's my work van. And how long you had that van for? I bought it in two thousand twenty-one. Actually, 2020, December 30th. I move to uh, admit and publish people's exhibit 20, Your Honor. Any objection? Well, are we admitting the entirety of the video or just this particular frame that's on the video? The entirety of the video, it's which is one minute and uh, 57 seconds. Okay, I have no objection. All right, this is a minute for the Thank you. Sir, what are we watching this video? What would him going mean? through my truck. Him being who? <clears throat> Suspect. Is that the same individual you confronted that day? Yep. Is that a yes? Yes. Sir, what did you just see? Looks to me like he took the laptop out of the middle. Okay. And started running. Sir, who is the individual we just saw uh, walking your van? The second individual. Do you recognize him? That's Nick. Is that uh, one of your employees? Correct. And he had permission to go in the truck at that time when you when you absolutely just... okay. I have no further questions. Sir. All right, cross the room. Sir, back on, on this particular day, at some point you gave a statement to uh, the police, correct? 
Yes. You can talk to us. Mr. Wizard, come in. Come for, for record purposes, could you please speak into the mic? At some point in that day, on this particular day, you did give a statement to the police. Is that right, sir? Correct. And you had the opportunity to give all the information that you wanted to give. Is that right? Correct. No one stopped you from giving any information you wanted to give. Is that right? That's correct. And nobody told you what to include in your particular statement. Is that right? No. It's not right. Someone told you what to include in your statement to the police. What's the question? Oh, objection. What's the question? It's kind of confusing. I asked him if anyone told him what to say in his statement. No. Okay. So when you, where were you when you were interviewed by the police? When? when where were you? First, I was on Baldwin Avenue, right before Tregent, just south of Tregent. On the street? Let him finish his answer, please. I was off the street. I pulled over the curb onto some grass. Was your coworker with you at that time, sir? That's correct. Was your coworker also interviewed by well, probably Blake Sheriff's? I believe so. Were you present when your coworker was interviewed? I mean, an objection. Hold on, hold on, sir. sir. Objection. Uh, he said, I believe so. He's not certain, so he's speculating at this point. He doesn't know for sure he was. So for, for her to ask him all questions, when he said, I believe so, that's not an absolute. He said, I believe so. If he said, yes, he did get interviewed, that's one that he there asked. Let's stay for speculation. Thank you, Coach Rock. Let's stay. No worries, Judge. I would have said, if you don't know, just tell me you don't know. <laughs> so let me ask you about your particular interview. Um, you were interviewed by a, a sheriff whose last name was Hunt. Do you remember that, sir? Yes. Okay. And you didn't know Sheriff Hunt prior to this day, did you? Never met him before. And you don't know any reason that Sheriff Hunt would write down something that he claims you said if you didn't say it. Is that right? I'm going to object to this. Hold on. 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 Hit the brakes. Uh, Your Honor, well, one, this witness does not know what Mr. Sergeant Hunt wrote in his report. Because again, and I've said this many times and I'll say it again, I don't provide my witnesses with the police statements for it. One, two, police reports are not evidence. So for sister counsel to ask him what would Mr. Hunt or Sergeant Hunt would write in the report, he has no knowledge about this report. All he has, if he wrote a statement, he knows about that statement. It's all he knows in regards to like police report. So I don't think it's an appropriate question. So I'd like to strike that for the record. So Stan, you can ask him if you made a statement to police. Okay. Regarding the question, did you tell the police officer Scott would blue? No. Okay. And if you believe he did, then you have a right to call the witness up to impeach. So okay. Mr. Stan. Mr. Aquinas, you told the officer that um, what you told the officers. Um, you're, you told the officers that you had part, you're the owner of JK Services, right? G and K. JK, is it JK Services? G and K. G and K Services. And you parked your van in the loading area that we saw, is that right? I'm sorry. And you had parked your van in the loading area as we saw on the photo, is that right? Correct. On the, the video, is that right? Correct. And in the video, you don't see my client take your laptop out the car, do you? Objection. That's that's not what he testified. On the video, we clearly saw an individual get in the car and obtaining an item, which uh, the witness, Mr. Coin, has testified. It's his belief to be his laptop. Okay. Sir, Judge, he can believe whatever he wants to believe. My question is, do you see my client take a laptop out of the vehicle? That's a yes or a no. You can answer the question. I saw something in his hands. Okay. But you don't know what it was, do you? From I'm based on at, what you can see in the video. That? No. Okay. So then you told the police the police when you were interviewed that you were unloading with some other employees when someone told 
another tenant told you that someone had pulled a knife on them. Is that right? Do you remember telling the police officer that? I'm going to object to your standard guards. Other people have said. Hold on one second. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to object to hearsay because, again, she is trying to say about what other people have told uh, Mr. Coinus, which obviously I didn't, and direct was never brought up to. It's, it's hearsay because we're talking about what other people said to Mr. Coinus. That's, that's the definition of hearsay. Your Honor, I can ask Mr. Coinus what he told the police. If what he told the police was he was told by another tenant that they were calling the police because someone had pulled a knife on them and stole some property. That's a proper question. I can ask, did he report that to the police? And he can testify to the statements he made. Uh, but I guess I give him the weight that is necessary to need. Okay, thank you. Did, did you tell the police that, sir? I guess it's too long ago. Okay. I don't even remember. Because today, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's it. Because today you tell us that my client pulled a knife on you. Is that correct? I'm going to object to, uh, again, his answer was, I guess, because it's been too long, 30. He doesn't, his, the definite answer is not that he's certain that's what he told the police, given the length of this case and the fact it's been over two years. Then it's so okay, wait, Judge. Can I please finish? <clears throat> What? So we're gonna get through the exam. We're gonna get through it. All right. So what's your objection, Mr. Pye? Legal, legal, uh what's your legal objection? Uh, the legal objection, Your Honor, again, is it's calls for speculation because he said, I guess. He didn't say I'm certain, I know for a fact. So again, we 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 know that speculations are not admissible. Thank you. Any response? The que my my question was, did he tell the police that? So I guess if he's now saying he didn't tell the police that, that's something different. If he's saying, I don't remember if I told the police that or not, no, I don't know if it's speculating, he just doesn't remember. And so if that's his answer, that's his answer. You can't say he's lying or telling the truth. Okay. So we can move on. So now today you said and your laptop was valued at $1,800. Is that correct, sir? I believe so, ma'am. It was new laptop, Surface Pro. Okay. Did you tell the police that when you returned to your vehicle, you found your Microsoft laptop valued at $1,200 missing? Again, objection, Your Honor. In regards to the value of a laptop, he said, I believe so. He did not say it's a definite, it's a, a certain, it's exactly. He, and even when I asked him direct, he did say it was a, a guess estimate. And again, whether the, the, the value of the property, I don't think it's an issue for, for a preliminary exam. And that's an issue for sentencing purpose if we get that far. But again, he believed it was above $1,000. Whether he said 1200 then, 1800 today, I don't think that is relevant. With the fact it's been two years. All right. Over a week. So do you recall telling the police that, sir, or not? About what? Your Microsoft laptop bag is about twelve hundred dollars. Honestly, I old. don't remember okay. a figure that I told the police officer. So, have you discussed this with other people between the time of this incident and today? Discuss what happened. Well, yeah, I live with my daughter and your coworkers. Co-worker was with me, yeah. Okay. You talked to the prosecutor's office about it, is that right? Prosecutor is the first time I'm out on. Okay. Any prosecutor? Huh? Any prosecutor. Talk to any prosecutor no. about this before you came to testify today? I've been here five times. Sir, the question is, have you talked to any prosecutor about this case before you came to testify today? I talked to this gentleman. Anyone else? From the prosecutor's office? No. Okay. And when you were being interviewed, do you recall if whoever was interviewing you was writing down or taking notes? I don't recall okay. that he was taking notes. Okay. And 
you had last seen your laptop about five minutes from when you parked your van at that location and came back out to find it was not there. About five minutes had gone by. Is that right? That's correct. And then you started uh, walking, checking on Howard Street. And the person that you said is the homeless person, was that someone whose name is Glenn Miller? Honestly, I don't know his name, but he was a good gentleman and he was homeless. Did you know him before? Never met him. Okay. And this person directed you to someplace else. Is that right? He said that the person that tried selling Sir, him just the laptop. But the was question is, did he oh, Josh, you? Can we let the witness yeah, just the answer a question? Go he's not going to say what his sister counsel wants to say, he's going to say what he thinks. Go ahead, sir. Finish the answer. Finish the answer, sir. I met him. I asked him out of the window of my van. I said, did you see somebody with a laptop? He said, I was just confronted by your suspect. Objection, Your Honor, to what he's telling me. I'm not asking him to tell me what the person said to him. I simply asked him a question that doesn't require him to say what anyone said. Okay. I asked him, was he directed to somewhere? That was the question. Yep. By the homeless yes. person? By the Glenn, homeless person, Ms. Quinn? If the homeless person's name is Mr. Glenn, sir, hold on, sir, hold on one second. Hey, listen. Let's just answer the questions that are on the floor with uh, no attitude. There's specific questions, these specific answers. We're delaying this because of attitudes. That's why this is going on. We answer the questions, we can get out of here. So a homeless person told correct. you some information which led you to the bar. Is that correct? Correct. And it was in regards to the laptop, correct? Correct. So let's move along from that station, Ms. Uh, Woodside. And then you went to this particular location, and, and then at some point you have, you say you encounter my client. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Now, when you talk to the police, do you remember telling them anything about my client pulling a knife on you at all, sir? I don't recall, but I know that he was holding it. Okay. And do you, and that was, would you agree that that would be something that's important that you would at least tell the police, wouldn't you? Honestly, ma'am, the only thing I wanted was my laptop. But can you answer my question? That would be something that you would agree would be important. You would tell the police, wouldn't you? I didn't feel threatened. Okay. And you weren't scared at all because you just told us you were pumped, right? I was pissed. Okay. Well, did you earlier said... No, I was, I was pumped. I pissed, was pissed me, off. Pissed too, right? Because someone stole. Okay. And my client, who you claim has this knife, he never swings it at you or does anything, correct? No, he just said, fuck off, and then he started running. And, 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 and ran away, is that right? So and you, I weren't, followed him. you weren't ever threatened with this knife. And I followed him. But you were never threatened with this knife, is that right? He was holding it. Were you threatened with a knife, sir? Just a yes or no. He did not put it up to my throat. No, ma'am. And sorry. He didn't swing it at you ever either. Is that right? No, he seemed like he was uh, a little bit out of it. Okay. So the question, the answer would, to my question would be no, sir. He never swung it at you. Is that right? Correct. And you said he had backpacks, is that right? You saw it on film. Okay. I'm asking you what did you say. Did yeah, you tell them that he, that he had two backpacks? Did you tell the police that? I said backpack. Okay. Mr. Coynes, please answer the questions, okay? There's no need yeah. for an attitude. I know we were frustrated, you've been here several times. But let's try to wrap it up. There's yeah. no need to give anybody a hard time here, including her or the judge. Thank you. Thank you. Do you recall telling them, the police, that my client had two backpacks, sir? No, I do not. Okay. And your laptop was eventually recovered. Is that correct, sir? It was recovered that same day 
by Mr. Hunt, okay. by Sergeant Hunt. Okay, and it, but at no time did you ever see my client with your laptop, is that right? No, I did not see it. Okay, thank you, no further questions. Uh, you Very Sir, you said that uh, you had a, when you confronted the, the defendant, you said you were pumped, right? Oh, yep. Uh, fair to say your emotions were running high? Very high. And did you have a mix of emotions? I was wanting my laptop back. Okay. Were you frustrated? I was angry. Because somebody stole your laptop? Yep. So when, when uh, the defendant pulled the knife on you, your focus was strictly on the laptop? Correct. Where are I, you at? I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean, go ahead. no, no, go ahead. Were you in any sort of fear that actually the defendant could have? Objection to what, what the defendant could have done, and it'll be speculation because he's already testified my client didn't do anything. Can I finish my? Question? That's well, that's my objection to the court. Okay. May I, uh, may I finish my question? If he says he wasn't in fear of a laptop. He's stating his present uh, emotions at that moment. So anything outside of that would be called for speculation. I'm sustaining the objection by Ms. Woodside. Okay. And were you afraid at all, sir? Objection, Your Honor. Ask and answer. No, it's not. That's that. We had that said a couple of times now. No, it's not. Fear and afraid and emotions are so, a subcategory of feelings right. that a human being so, has. So. so here's the deal. That question is going to be asked this one last time. Answer the question, Mr. Connors. Were you afraid? Afraid is not the word. No. So you're not afraid. Okay. What's the word? Anger. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Are right, you all set, Mr. Points? Thank you. Any more witnesses on behalf of the prosecution? Uh, yeah, we're going to bring the next question to Mr. Uh, Nicholson. Now, people would like to call Mr. Eric Nicholson to a stand, Your Honor, sir. Approach the stand, watch a step. Before you sit down, I'm going to have you raise your right hand and uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm subject to the pain of the purging testimony to this court? The truth, the truth, the truth. I do. All right, you may be seated right there. So speak up, say yes or no, and only answer the question that's posed to you, okay? Yes. You may begin. Thank you. Sir, what is your full name? Eric Richard Nicholson. And uh, where are you employed, sir? Uh, Nicholson Associates at 40 West Howard. And is that where your office is located? Yes. Let me draw your attention on July 5th, 2022. Uh, did you actually go to the office this day? Uh, I don't remember, but I believe I was in that day after July 4th. In July 5th? Or July 5th, yes. So were you in that day or no? Uh, yes, I believe I was. Okay, and uh, prior to that day, had you, so the way how you receive your mailing uh, stuff that people mail or like any sort of mail, what is the system set up to that location, to your knowledge? Uh, there's a mailbox down in the front entrance, and packages are placed uh, down in the mailroom, in the mailbox. And you pick your mail in that big room over there? Yes. And do you know, to your knowledge, is there any cameras in that room? Uh, yes, there are cameras. And at, at prior to that day, had you ordered some items online? Yes. What had you ordered? Uh, I had ordered an air filter. Air filter. And at some point that day, on July 5th, did you receive a notification in your phone that your package had been uh, delivered? Yes. And once you know, once you receive that notification, did you actually go to uh, retrieve that item? Uh, when I came in to the building that day, I uh, checked the mail room for the, the package. And so was the package there? It was not. Why, what, why was it not there? Uh, you know, how would you know why the package, package wasn't there? It would cause speculation. Okay. No, because he received a notification in his phone that the package was delivered. And once you went to grab it, he's going to tell it why he didn't find it there. 
Or what, what did he learn when he went to grab the package? I guess I can rephrase that way. Yeah, I guess you could say, what did you do once you found your package wasn't there? When so, fair enough. So once you received notification, you went to retrieve the package, correct? That is correct, yes. And did you, what did you do next once you didn't find your package? Uh, in the mail room, Sergeant Hunt and Emily were there and- uh, well, you can testify as to what you saw. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I told them that my package was missing, and uh, I don't remember what happened after that. Okay. And did you see any packages with your name there that was open? No. Okay. And Sir, can you describe us the packaging area on where the mail is uh, is dropped or picked up? I'm sorry, I described the area? Yes. Uh, so you enter the front door. Um, to your left is a mailboxes with a space beneath it for packages. Uh, and then if you go straight forward, there's a staircase. Um, on the opposite wall is a, a bulletin board. It's a what? A bulletin board. And to your knowledge, do you know if there's any camera in that area? Uh, yes, there is a camera. So to your knowledge, is any- My knowledge. I'm sorry. Uh, to my knowledge, there is a camera. To your knowledge, there is a camera. Mm -hmm. And is that near us surveillance 24 seven to your knowledge? Uh, I do not know. Okay. Sir, I've been put up here as people's uh, exhibit two. Do you recognize this area? Yes. How do you recognize that area? Uh, I work there, I walk through there every day. And is that a fair or accurate representation of how that area looked that day? Uh, yes. Uh, Your Honor, I move to uh, publish and admit people's uh, exhibit two, the packaging area surveying the Any objections, Ms. Lissa? No, Your Honor. Admitted for exam. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we're going to, uh, me and the sister counsel, we're agreeing to stipulate to fast forward, not play the entire seven minutes. Where the defendant comes back and, and then is back to the camera again. Sir, what does that appear to be in the picture? Uh, an air filter. Is that the kind of air filter in the order? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Any cross? I have no questions. All right. You missed that time, sir. Thank you. Maybe you have a witness on behalf of one last witness, Your Honor. If you would like to call James Salt, please. Don't wait. Who is that? Sorry. James Salt. So, so I'm going to have you approach that white chair over there. Watch the step. There is one step over there. Before you sit down, uh, judges may ask you to raise your right hand, face toward him. All right, face me, please, sir. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm? Subject to the pains and pills of perjury. Testimony to this court be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. All right, you may be seated. Sir, can you please state your full name, spell your last name for the record? James A. Salk, S A L K. Sir, do you have a suite in the city of Pontiac? Had one. Okay, and uh, how long, when was that? Um, we moved into the building at 40 West in um, 2005, and we retired in September. September what year? This year. I mean, 2023. 2023, okay. So at that suite, do you, would you typically receive mail and stuff that you would order online? Every day. And was it a designated area that you would receive that stuff? Yes. On honor about July 5th, did prior to that day, had you ordered some mail? Yes. What had you ordered, do you recall? Uh, four spools of wire. And uh, did you, what, do you recall where you ordered those? Parts Express. And did you ever actually receive those? No. Why not? I received an email saying the package had been delivered, but I went down to the mail area and it wasn't there. Okay, I have no further questions, thank you. Hold on. The spoons of wire, you said you ordered four? Yes. You from where, sir? Do you recall? My cost was about $100 for the four. No, I said, do you recall? Do you recall from where you ordered these spoons yes. of wire? Parts Express. What, what type of wire? 
Hookup wire for speakers. Uh, electric, some type of electrical wire? Yes. Okay, thank you. No further questions. All right, so you said you were at 40, where's the location of, of, the, of your business? 40 West Howard Street. What's, what's the name, what was the name of your business? Soft Sound. Soft Sound? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You're all set, sir. Thank you. Any other witnesses, Mr. Powell? No, you are People are. Any witnesses on behalf of Mr. Amber Time? No, you are. All right, motion to bind over. Yeah, on a reason of testimony here we've heard today, uh, there's no question that there, there's issue for a trier fact. Uh, people were presented uh, overwhelming evidence in regards to count one for, for armed robbery from Mr. Crows, which testified here uh, that he uh, confronted the defendant at his place of business and told him to drop the wires he had in his hand and indicated that uh, he did not do so. And when he told him for a second time, he pulled the knife out and then he told him to take the wires and leave. Uh, that meets the perfect standards of a uh, defendant was committing a larceny and electrical wire, and he did put Mr. Uh, Gross in fear at that time. Regard, in regards to count two, breaking and entering vehicle to seal the property, a thousand more or less, uh, less than 20,000. We had testimony, testimony here from Mr. Coyne is that his laptop. Uh, was stolen from his vehicle. We saw the defendant actually go in his vehicle, People's Exhibit 1, and actually taking an item, and uh, the laptop was missing, was later recovered uh, by one of the deputies. In regards to uh, Mr. Coinis, I would ask the court, based on his testimony, to add a count five of felonious assault. He did indicate that when he had, uh, confronted the defendant in regards to his laptop, the defendant was uh, approximately four feet away from him, and uh, he had a knife at that time. And he did approach his vehicle. Initially, it was eight feet away from his van, and then he got closer towards his direction and uh, definitely had the capability of, of, of committing, <clears throat> committing an assault, even though one was not done, but he did have a knife and he had the capability of doing so. In regards to count uh, three and four, Larson in the building, the testimony is crystal clear. So I respectfully to ask by over as charged count one, count two, count three, count four, and add count five. Thank you. All right, Ms. Uh, what's that? Uh, Your Honor, uh, count four, that's stealing of the air box. So I think that's a question of fact. As to count three, the um, Van, the, the, the laptop. My client has never seen with this laptop. I asked him, was it later recovered? But he's, he's never seen with this laptop at all. And as to Mr. Crosey's uh, testimony, uh, he allegedly has this wire before he even comes out of his office. And then when he comes out of his office, he simply says, put this wire down. My client allegedly, between some two second period, allegedly takes displays at night, doesn't come for him, doesn't use it in any way to try to harm him. And he says, well, he's afraid. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't turn around and try to leave. Uh, this exchange is a very brief period of time. And then he goes and leaves the building after he says, well, this is fine, then just take it and leave. And then that's what my client does, according to him. So I would submit that is not an armed robbery, Your Honor, because this knife is not used to get property from Mr. Crosey. The property was, according to Mr. Crosey, was already in his hand. And he doesn't display this knife for the purpose of taking more wire. He, and Mr. Crosey doesn't even say he even takes any more wire, allegedly. The same wire that he had when he was first seen is the wire that he is told to take and leave. So, Judge, this is not an armed robbery. And as it relates to that laptop, my, again, my client's not seen with this laptop. Someone directs him to some place. He's not seen with this laptop at all. At some type of point, this laptop is required. And the rest of them are question of fact. And as it relates to count five, uh, Mr. Mr. Coinus. Fourth Coinus. And no matter how the prosecutor wanted Mr. Coyne to change his testimony, that he was so fearful, Mr. Coyne was never in fear. Mr. Coyne was angry and was pissed. So he wasn't ever afraid of being assaulted. He said he was calm and then he was pissed. He wasn't afraid. So there was no felonious assault. And that's the court not to bind over on that. And but I, I just don't want to forget to ask the prosecutor if 
uh, Deputy Hunt had body cam for any of these interviews that took place that are reflected in the police report. Just for the record, John, uh, Oakland County Sheriff just recently got last year, I believe, September was the start of implementation. But it was very recent that they obtained body cam. So at that time, as an officer of the court, I can represent the court that the Oakland County Sheriff's did not have body cameras. That's something that was recently implemented. So for the record, there's no body cam that ever existed. Whatever video evidence that I that was obtained from this case has already been produced to sister counsel. So if I might respond briefly in regards to count one. I just have one additional oh, I'm sorry, let me check you If it's, they say they don't have body cam, I want to make sure I have all, any and all dash cam video from any vehicles that were used during this particular investigation this entire day. If the, again, I'll respond to that too. If there is anything that was preserved in the time frame of this case, the people will definitely do that. Everything in my power to make sure that if those videos still exist, I'll be more than willing to 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 to, to retrieve those and to <clears throat> provide it to sister counsel. Anything else, or may I respond? No, that was just what I just don't want to forget that. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, in regards to uh, count twenty one on robbery, uh, one, there's no question that, that the defendant was committing a larceny. And the fact that the fact that the victim of this matter said, "Just take it and leave." Like Darcy one is very clear. He said it because he was in fear for his life when he saw that knife. So the fact that he didn't take any more, last time I checked, a larceny, whether you take 100 or one, it's a larceny. And that's exactly what we have here. So the fact that he was he already had some, one or two in his hand and he didn't take any more, does not negate the fact that he, he pulled the knife and, and he took that item. And it, so he, he did commit the armed robbery and commission of a larceny. So that definitely meets the standard. In regards to Count two was Gary Coyne's. Well, for the record, I'm not a business on the business of telling people what to say or testify. But as we know, Sister Counsel has been long enough to know that people feel differently. So what I was trying to do is, is to exactly describe for the record how Mr. Coyne's was feeling. And he said it. He was angered. He, 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 he was frustrated and angered that somebody had stolen his laptop. But again, that does not negate the fact that the defendant pulled the knife. And he has the capability of actually assaulting Mr. Quinnis. It was approximately four feet away. Mr. Quinnis was in his van. And Mr. and the defendant in this case could have clearly had the capability of committing the felonious assault. He doesn't have to commit the assault. So that's why I would ask the court to add count five. And as regards to count three and four, it's an issue for a trial fact that it speaks for itself. All right. So uh We'll start with count. I'm, I'm going to add Florence assault as a reasonable person standard. That's the case law. That's what we instruct the jury. So therefore, uh, we'll add count five for Lonis assault for the knife. Um, obviously, there was testimony. He was pissed. He was amped up. Um, however, the jury instruction says a reasonable person. So uh, one will put this up in a reasonable person position of having a knife pulled on them. Obviously, that would uh, create a um, fear of being stabbed or or, or um, so we'll add that count. Um, as far as the uh, death from a building three and four, um, I think it's uh, the testimony is credible, obviously corroborated by the video of Mr. Hambright Times in the building um, without permission. I'm going through mail and stealing that mail. Air, we saw air filters being stolen, and then we saw some spools on top of the air filter that Mr. Um, Hambright Times walked out the door with. So it's a question of fact on that one. The breaking and entering question of fact. The armed robbery. Um, so to prove this charge, the prosecutor must prove each of the following evidence elements beyond a reasonable doubt. This is what we instruct the jury. First, the defendant used force or violence against slash assaulted slash put in fear uh, Mr. Uh, Proceed. Um, second, that he did so while in the course of committing a larceny, which is the taking and movement of someone else's property or money with the intent to take it away from that person permanently. And then um, count element number three is uh, that uh, Mr. Coenus was present while the defendant was in the course of the larceny. And the fourth element is while in the course of committing a larceny, the defendant um, had possessed a weapon that was designed to be dangerous and capable of causing death or serious injury. Um, I think that um, all five of these elements are met with the testimony to bind them over on armed robbery. Um, that uh, Mr. Corsi was at work. Um, he works at um, the sign company. 
and he got in early, was at his desk in his office. He heard a noise, went and investigated. And there's Mr. Hambright Times with spools in his hands um, of wire. And so he confronted him, hey, what are you doing? Uh, put the wire down. He described him as a young black male, long hair, white beater, and a backpack, all of which we saw in that video. Um, he was walking out with the wire spools. He asked him to put it down. And then he pulled out the knife and they were four feet away. He was facing Mr. Cross and he had the knife in his hand. Um, the fact that uh, it, 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 it does not matter what the defendant does. We got to do an analytical research and study on these statutes. The legislative intent of this statute is not on what the defendant did, it's how the person felt. So therefore, Mr. Crossy said he was put in fear. He said it multiple times. The statute doesn't say what the defendant did with the knife, it's what the person in which confronted with the knife or the weapon felt. So that's why that first element is met. Now, obviously, it's a no-brainer that he committed larceny. It's a no-brainer uh, Mr. Crossy saw him commit larceny because he had spools he did not own and that um, he was in the middle of it and that he had the knife. I mean, it's, it's a question of fact. There was evidence put on this uh, record to go to each element, so he's bind over as charged, including the felonious assault, and the bond is continued. And in regards to count three, do you have? Uh, count three, oh, he's, he, uh, count three. The, count two, uh, count two. The breaking and under. Oh, yeah, that, that's a question of fact. Okay, thank he you. He was in the building that he did not uh, have permission to be in. He was not a tenant. And the landlord, there's no testimony that the landlord, the owner of the building, gave permission to be there. He had a business even being in there. So he's bound by over his charge. Thank you, Your Honor. I do, I do have one additional request if there are any notes from the officers. Since they didn't have body cams and they're not sure if they had in our video. Do they still have notes from these various interviews? All right, so I will follow the, if I were you out to follow, follow the discovery request no, the first quarter. I just want to make sure that, that, that I put it on the record now, and I will send you a discovery order to that effect. Okay, okay. I haven't received anyone for the record yet, but whatever, again, it exists, uh, I'll definitely at this time, again, I would like the record to, to reflect for two awesome. years after. So whatever is existed and is there, uh, sister council will obtain the, the Quickest way possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the